911. What is your emergency? It's Valentine's Day 2018. They believe there's a shooter at the school. Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School is under siege. An active shooter is terrorizing the campus. It was just a normal day at school that suddenly turned to a nightmare for the city of Parkland, Florida. The massacre marked the deadliest high school shooting in U.S. history. Surveillance video and witness identification led to the arrest of then 19 year old. He was in my class in seventh grade and I knew he wasn't okay when he punched the window in and said, I'm going to cause karma one day because he got in trouble with the teacher. Was a former student at the school. He'd been expelled the year before in February 2017 for disciplinary reasons. But records indicate he was a troubled person long before the massacre. He was a huge threat to the school because of his behavior. When he was suspended, they found shells of bullets in his backpack. Just 40 days earlier, a woman who knew told the FBI he was collecting guns and ammunition and feared he was, quote, going to slip into a school and start shooting the place up. What's more, investigative reports point to years of a disturbing digital trail. Reportedly researched mass shootings and posted threatening messages all over the Internet. This one says, I'm going to be a professional school shooter. In fact, it would be those very phone records as well as school surveillance video that would help authorities piece together what they say happened. A little after 2 p.m., took an Uber from his home to the school about three miles away. Security video shows a male wearing black jeans, maroon shirt, vest and hat, carrying a large black bag, enter building 12. In the first floor stairwell, he takes out an AR-15 rifle. Just then, a student walks in, sees the gun, and hurries out at 2.21 p.m. School video shows the active shooter terrorizing all three floors of the freshman building, taking the lives of 14 teenagers and three adults. Alerted by a fire alarm and what sounded like gunshots, the school resource officer, the only other person armed with a weapon on campus, makes his way towards the building but does not go in. We started hearing more and more shots, so then everyone started running. Minutes later, the shooting finally stops. The suspect drops the weapon and tactical gear, and authorities say he left campus, blending in to the crowd. Police hadn't even entered the building yet. At 3.36 p.m., more than an hour later, was stopped and arrested. Authorities interrogate and appear to secure a confession. He is charged with 17 counts of first degree premeditated murder and 17 counts of attempted murder. During hours long questioning, informs the detective he hears voices in his head that tell him to burn, kill, destroy. Now faces the death penalty at trial. Uh, I understand fully what you're saying. Okay, are you having any trouble concentrating? No, no. His lawyers say Cruz is prepared to plead guilty in return for a life sentence, an offer the prosecutors have rejected. All right, you might have noticed a lot of uh, blanks in, the, in that uh, piece there by Chanley. We took out the name of the uh, defendant in this case on purpose, out of respect for all of the family members, and specifically our next guest. Joining us, one of the fathers of the victims of the Parkland shooting, Tony Montalto, um, Tony's daughter, 14-year-old Gina, was working on a school project in the hallway when the shooting began. Tony is the president of Stand with Parkland, the National Association of Families for Safe Schools. Tony, many families are gathering tonight, getting ready to celebrate Thanksgiving. There's going to be a, an empty spot at your table again this year. Talk, if you would, initially here about your daughter, Gina, Gina and, and the pain that uh, you continue to suffer, especially uh, on holidays like Thanksgiving. Well, as we approach a holiday season, we know that uh, families gather. What's left of our family still gathers together. However, we have an empty seat at the table. We're uh, reminded of doing uh, traditions that our daughter loved and uh, having her there with our son and uh, helping prepare the meal and uh, celebrating the holiday with uh, with the rest of our family as we gather. It's very, very difficult to 
have that empty chair and not see that smiling face and bubbly personality at our table. And um, I'm sure that all the other families who lost a loved one that day feel the same way. Uh, we're, we're damaged and, and hurt by, uh, by this forever and ever. Uh, Gina was a great kid. She was very helpful, very uh, engaging, and uh, we really wish she was here with us. Where do you get your strength? Well, you know, it's really about honoring Gina and, uh, and the other victims. Uh, they were all fantastic people who deserve to be honored appropriately. And that's why all the families came together to form Stand With Parkland, the National Association of Families for Safe Schools, to do something to help prevent the tragedy similar to the one that uh, took our beautiful children and uh, the spouses that terrible February day. Talk a bit about Stand With Parkland, the Parkland Initiative. What, what is the organization for those who aren't familiar and, and how can they get more information about it and what's, what's the mission statement? So standwithparkland.org, uh, of course, is our website. And uh, we were founded by uh, all the families who lost someone in the massacre. Uh, we uh, decided to come together to try and prevent another school shooting. We promote a triad of things to help prevent that. Uh, securing the campus, better mental health screening and support programs, and also responsible firearms ownership. All three of those things failed us that terrible February day. And we wanna bring people together to find pragmatic solutions that will help make our students and staff safer at schools. I know one of the things that you wanted to talk about tonight is something called the Columbia Protocol. What is that? Well, the Columbia Protocol is a set of uh, six simple questions. What uh, it does is help everyone engage and ask these questions to someone close to them, someone who they think might be in trouble. And there's a gauge on the back of the card that uh, tells you where to go next, depending on the answers you get. And sometimes just the simple act of reaching out to a family member or a friend and letting them know that you still think about them and that you have uh, enough care to ask these questions to find out how they're feeling Sometimes just that simple connection will make all the difference it can. This program is very effective because it's very simple with these six questions. Anybody could ask them. And again, the guide on the back of the card puts you right where you, tells you right what you need to do next. It's also available on an app for iPhone and Android. And, uh, you know, especially this holiday season where so many people are disconnected and, and, and uh, not close to their loved ones or their friends or their neighbors, it's really important to reach out and you can be a hero in their life by just asking these simple questions. They're available on standwithparkland.org on our resources page and you go down to the Columbia Protocol. And uh, we encourage everybody to take a look at it because it's so important that we look out for our students, our children, our family members, uh, especially in this, uh, in this time of uh, the COVID pandemic. Yeah. Um, by reaching out, we can all make a difference, trying to be connected. Yeah, I looked at it as the simplicity is the beauty in it, um, and I urge everybody uh, to take a, take a look at it. Um, finally, tonight, I, we don't, we're not going to talk about the defendant in this case, um, or his name, but the process. It has slowed, and it has slowed considerably now because of COVID. How is that affecting you and the other families? Well, we uh, just had a status hearing this last week, and... Uh, you know, one of the problems has been that the uh, defense has been unable to get their experts in to meet with the uh, meet with the uh, suspect uh, in the jail due to COVID restrictions. Uh, fortunately, uh, this past hearing, we had a representative from the Broward County Sheriff's Office on the hearing, and he said that he's willing to do whatever it takes to uh, accommodate the defense's wishes. Uh, unfortunately, they kept putting up more and more arguments against it. And um, uh, at the end of that hearing, nothing was resolved. But uh, one of the moms who lost her son, uh, Nicholas Dorette, is a nurse. And uh, 
she called the uh, prosecutor and mentioned that, you know, every day the people on our front lines in the hospitals and the emergency rooms are putting on the gear, protecting themselves and interacting and evaluating people. So I think it's a, a little bit of a specious argument for the defense to say that they couldn't do anything. Mm, yeah, that's a painfully uh, frustrating process, I'm sure. Tony Montalto, our, um uh, we're with you, uh, uh, your, you and your family, and all of the families. Um, we're thinking of you, uh, especially during this holiday season. Thank you uh, so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, and uh, have a happy Thanksgiving to everyone else. All right, you too. It's Tony Montalto, whose daughter Gina died in the Parkland massacre. We'll be right back.